Hi, my name is Sydney Smith Romansky, and I'm a systems engineer at DefibTech. I knew towards the end of high school that I wanted to pursue a um, field of STEM in higher education. The classes that I really enjoyed taking were chemistry, biology, calculus, AB, and BC. I had some very encouraging teachers um, that I worked with in those classes that um, encouraged me to pursue those fields in college. When I was a senior in high school, I injured my spine um, during sports, and so I was exposed to a lot of CT scans, MRIs, uh, CT guided procedures, and titanium implants. Um, and that sort of started an interest in the medical field for me as well. Um, so when I learned about biomedical engineering, it seemed like a mesh of all the different topics that I enjoyed studying in high school and was interested in learning about further. I pursued a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering with a focus in bioinstrumentation and biosystems. I also pursued a Bachelor of Arts in German Studies. When I was in college, I had three different internships. Uh, two were in uh, small medical manufacturing companies. One was um, at a company called Zetras that worked with therapeutic ultrasound devices for soft tissue injuries. And the other company was DefibTech, where I work at today, um, where I worked doing um, a number of different validation, testing, um, regulatory submission help um, tasks that gave me a lot of exposure to different aspects of the medical engineering field. I also had an internship in Heidelberg, Germany at the Lab for Biomechanics and Implant Research, which gave me um, some insight into the re research side of the STEM field. After I came back from Germany and was working on my final year of undergrad at UConn, I was able to interview for a full-time position as a systems engineer at DefibTech, where I get to work with many of the mentors and colleagues that I had as an intern. Um, it's been a really rewarding experience to learn all the aspects of systems engineering. Um, I'm working part-time to finish a master's in systems engineering at the University of Johns Hopkins through their online program of engineering for professionals. The transition from uh, biomedical studies at the University of Connecticut to systems engineering to FibTech was a great one because my biomedical background gave me exposure to all different engineering fields such as mechanical, software, um, electrical, and then the bio and medical side of technology. So systems engineering involves um, each of those fields in, um, in application. And a lot of what I do day to day involves requirement creation, um, refinement, working with subject matter experts on implementing um, design solutions that meet requirements and user needs. Um, I've learned a lot about medical safety standards, which need to be accounted for, not only in the design, but the quality system that's used in the company, uh, which has been really valuable information and experience for me to have. Um, I work with risk management as well, which is very interesting to make sure that risk mitigation techniques are used in the design of a product, um, not only in how the product works, but also in the operational environment, how users will interact with the product. I also do a lot of work across departments, communicating with um, different people, uh, such as in quality, regulatory, manufacturing, marketing, sales, customer service. It's really important when you work in STEM to uh, own your communication skills and especially technical writing skills um, that you need to develop when you pursue your higher education. These are some of the products that we design and manufacture at DefibTech. One of our products are the automated external defibrillators, commonly known as AETs. This is the Lifeline and the Lifeline View. 
in the fully automated design. They only have an on button and they're fully automated to shock if a patient is in a cardiac state where they need a shock. So if someone is unresponsive and not breathing, look for an AED around your school or any public location that you may be in. They're oftentimes on the wall of public buildings in a glass and metal box that says AED on it. The other product that we design and manufacture is called the Lifeline Arm. This is an automated chest compression machine that delivers automated compressions to someone that needs CPR therapy. It's intended for medical professionals such as EMTs and paramedics to use, and it takes away the manual drain of doing CPR on a patient. The Lifeline arm has a frame, a backboard, and a compression module that drives the piston to give consistent rate and depth compressions. The American Heart Association recommends compressions between 2 to 2.4 inches at a rate between 100 to 120 beats per minute. Our Lifeline arm is compliant with these requirements. In an easy sequence of events to power on the device, adjust down to the person, ensure that the device is lined up correctly. You can deliver automated compressions quickly and effectively. One of my proudest accomplishments at Defib Tech um, was when we were able to um, secure a very large sale of a few hundred um, Lifeline arm devices in the EU with our fantastic partners, Nihon Code in Europe. Um, I had to stay late to do some extra testing the night before um, and write up a report. And um, it was really important to make sure that that came through. And um, I think it's really important as young individuals to do what you can to try and make something happen, even if the answer is not obvious or if um, you don't have necessarily what you need, figuring out how you can make something happen. Um, and so that was a really proud moment that I was able to pull that together and help us, um, our teams, to secure that deal. So some advice that I would give to women or people of marginalized genders in STEM is to really reach out to career development options and resources, either at your high school or when you get to college. A lot of the opportunities that I had were a product of conversations that I had with other people, um, such as teachers, professors, advisors, that had either great experience themselves or new people that did. Um, it never hurts to ask, and so my best recommendation would be to take full advantage of those resources.